It's been over 12 months since COVID entered our lives, but COVID isn't the only pandemic. There's a pandemic that's going on right now that you're not aware of, and that's the disconnection pandemic, the disconnection between humans and their dogs. And this is really important because it leads to so many negative outcomes and negative circumstances for dogs. And humans don't even realise that they're putting their dogs into these negative circumstances. Now, I wanted to illustrate this with some footage that I took back in the end of January. And I was just making my way home from a consultation, behaviour consultation, and I thought I'll just set up my video camera and just take some random footage um, on the way home and see what I could see. And what I saw made me really sad because um, disconnection is here and it seems that it's only gone more momentum, especially when we consider that we are now labelling dogs even more. We're calling them companion dogs, therapy dogs, emotional support dogs. Um, and these sorts of uh, labels also disconnect us because we don't see the living species behind or that is being obscured by that label. And so I just want to take you through some footage that, that, I, uh, that I took. And let's see, I haven't looked at it for a couple of months, so let's see what we see. But this is, this is Disconnection 101. So, and this is just an average Sunday of people out with their dogs. And here we can see some people, they've got their coffees, they're talking to each other. The dogs are just monotonously walking, um, not paying attention to the dog. The dog's actually wanting to have a little bit of a look at the grass there, maybe have a sniff, but no, we're going to pull on that leash and we're going to deny our dogs any freedom or choice. And you'll notice that there's lots of walkways. Here's another one here. So we've got a dog having a sniff, which is really nice. And we're walking along the footpath. And footpaths don't have anything nice. As you can see, this dog wants to have another bit of a sniff. Um, but the human isn't even paying attention. Oh, we've got a bit of a look there now. And we're lucky we just had a chance to go for a wee, to stop to go for a wee. Now, you can see all of this concrete here. There are footpaths. And Basically, they're deterring dogs and humans with their dogs away from places where dogs really need to be, sniffing and foraging and investigating the social media of their neighbourhood. Now, this is a really um, particularly sad case because we can see that the little dog on the right there, and it's really nice that they're picking up their dog's poo, that's really good, um, but as you'll see, this little dog is just going to be dragged along. Okay, now this dog isn't feeling comfortable on leash and this dog is trailing behind and the other dog in front is actually looking like he's got a bit of a limp there, but the humans aren't even paying attention. And it's, it's um, really distressing when I see things like this because you know, you, you're basically just holding onto a piece of, piece of um, leash and you're not paying attention to the living, breathing, sentient animal that's on the other end of that leash that actually might want to have a stop and sniff or may not even actually enjoy being on a leash to start with. And this little dog doesn't look comfortable on this leash and collar um, and looks like he's just, or he or she is just tolerating this. And here we can see again, we've got two dogs. This shepherd's on a very short leash. We've got another dog trailing behind. The people are talking. Um, and these dogs are just monotonous, monotonously walking on leash. I thought we might have a nice little breakthrough here with um, this little dog that um, is going to get to have a sniff. Um, and as you can see, once again, it's a really beautiful area with lots of physical barriers, um, lots of things to sniff. And once again, these the, the, the humans aren't paying attention. They're just holding onto the leash and the dog just has to follow. So, um, and once again, this little dog that's trailing um, is just not enjoying that experience. It's not an emotionally satisfying experience for that dog. So once again, beautiful area. This is such a lovely place to get off the pathway and get onto the grass so the dogs can actually enjoy the surroundings, can sniff, can stop and stand in the shade um, instead of actually walking on a, a straight path like that, that doesn't actually allow dogs to approach each other in different directions, opposite directions, 
in a way that's actually non-confrontational for them. So this is nice, this little doggy has had a nice little sniff and we're walking at a nice fast pace and are we going to get a chance to have a sniff? No, we're going to keep um, walking briskly. Now, why are we taking our dogs for, for walks on leashes, uh, on lead? Are we doing it to give them an experience that they'll enjoy? Well, it doesn't look like it so far. Now, this looks really nice. We've got a young man walking his dog on the grass. This is great. Are we going to stop to have a sniff? Um, and we find no, we're actually just going to walk straight onto the pathway. And this human is actually wearing headphones, as you'll see, so that he's cutting out all the distractions from the noise, from the surroundings. And he's also isolating himself from his dog, so he's disconnecting himself from his dog. Look, it's nice that this dog is actually walking ahead, but this dog is wanting to have a little bit of a sniff there, but the human is actually walking at a very fast pace, and that's not going to be something that the human is going to want to stop um, doing, um, despite the dog wanting to have a sniff or have some choice in the matter. Now, this is a really sad situation. A lovely dog here tethered to a fence in the sun, as you can see, the humans have got a nice drink. They've got something to keep them occupied. They're chatting to each other. And this dog is pacing and not looking particularly happy, panting. Uh, and the dog's being completely ignored and the humans are disconnected from their dog. So this is nice at first glance. You think this is nice, a couple of dogs playing with each other, but they're on leash. So this is another way that humans are disconnected from their dogs because they change the goalposts. They say, okay, it's okay for you to play here in this circumstance. And maybe they just bump into each other because they have a, a similar breed and decided to stop and introduce the dogs to each other. But doing it this way is not appropriate. And it's actually, it's actually promoting play behaviour when you're on leash. So when humans are changing the goalposts like this and being disconnected from their dogs, and you can see that the humans in, intervene there um, to try to separate the dogs, but we've still got some nice bouncy plates. But it's, it's nice to see that, but being on leash that's being a little bit disconnected from, from the dogs with respect to um, showing them the right circumstances in which they can actually um, engage in this, in this lovely behaviour. And there's a tension shake there so that the dog on the left has just shaken some tension out of his body and we're back to some, normal, to, to some nice play, bouncy play gestures there. This is a, an especially sad situation I see so many times. Here we have we've got some humans sitting down in the shade, they're enjoying something, they're enjoying a drink, one human's on his phone, both of the humans are completely ignoring the dog, the dog's expected to sit down, the dog's panting, the dog is restless, the dog clearly isn't enjoying this situation and you'll see at the end of this video we have another dog just approaching from the left of the screen and that dog just licked his lips so that's a stressful, potentially stressful and confrontational um, um, introduction if you like to those for that for that dog that's sitting down um, and that's going to lead to stress and conflict and anxiety in those situations so the the next one here and you can see here, so the dog wants a sniff no we're going to drag you back so and why are we dragging the dog back well because we want to go and probably put out put our dog in a situation where that other dog was crammed under a table in a very hot environment with nothing to do nothing to sit on nothing to uh, keep them mentally occupied and it's a very uh, unsatisfying uh, emotional experience. This is really nice. This man was sitting down but he was patting, patting his dog and interacting with his dog and giving him, his dog some lovely tactile interaction. So that was really nice. Um, and here's, here's another one here. Now I don't want you to criticise this dog for pulling on the lead. I want you to pay attention with the way that this human just like the other human that was sitting down on the bench, um, on the chair, was is connected to their dogs. So this dog is allowed to have a good sniff. He may be pulling on the leash, but I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on the dog actually having choice, being able to stop and have a sniff, catch up on the social media, be a dog, um, use their nose, allow your dog to be excited when they're in a situation with lots of exciting smells and breezes um, and scents from the salt sea or the, the grass and the trees and things like that. So this is really lovely because this man, believe it or not, is actually connected to his dog because he's allowing his dog to have an emotionally satisfying experience when out on a walk. So when I'm talking about disconnection, you can be di disconnected from your dog 
in those situations there where you're just monotonously walking on a lead and you're just holding onto the lead absent-mindedly and you might be dragging your dog or you don't want your dog to do what they want to do and you're, uh, you're basically inserting your or imposing your will on your dog. Now, you can also be disconnected from your dog if you're a person that actually dresses your dog up in clothes and allows your child to hug your dog without understanding your dog's body language and what emotional state they're trying to convey to you. You're also disconnected from your dog when you're, especially when you leave your dog home for hours and hours on end and you understand, you know that your dog has nothing to do, you know that your dog has separation distress. You're also disconnected from your dog if you take your dog to a restaurant and you, you have a, a, a harness on your dog and a vest on your dog that says therapy dog and then cram them under a table, expect them to sit on a hard surface for a couple of hours while you're eating dinner. But you're also disconnected from your dog when you put labels on your dog and try to compartmentalise your dog by calling them a therapy dog or a dog that is a companion dog. Um, and so that means that you think you have the, have the a right or the justification to then take your dog to restaurants and cram them under a table for a couple of hours without them having anything to do, without them having something nice to sit on, without them actually having any interaction from you. Um, also taking your dog to a shopping centre and having a collar on your dog and then jerking on the collar and not even looking at your dog while you're pushing your trolley around. I see these situations so many times. Um, these therapy dogs, what do these dogs get in return? And how much therapy can a dog provide a human when they're crammed under a table and ignored for two hours without any food, water or anything um, emotionally satisfying to keep them occupied for that time? So what I'm hoping that you're going to see, you may not actually see what I'm, what I'm trying to point out in these videos at this time, but what I'm wanting you to do is just to be more observant, to be connected, to be present with your dog, to ask yourself why. Why am I actually taking my dog for a walk? Um, is it because I'm just going through the motions? Is it because I think that my dog needs physical exercise every single day in the form of leash walking, which is a myth. Exercise comes in many different forms. The most important thing that your dog gets to do, or should get to do, is to be able to exercise choice. and be able to have a good sniff and forage when they're out on a walk. But the most important thing that your dog needs from you, the human, is for you to be connected to them because when you are connected, you're raising your consciousness because you're being present and you're also coming from a place um, of empathy and compassion. And that means that you are connected to another living, breathing, sentient animal that feels emotional and physical pain. So I hope you can see the value in this video and I hope that you will be more observant and start to look around and just start to notice all of the silent circumstances that our dogs are enduring every single day and raise your consciousness. It just takes one person. We'll talk again soon.